champions. Welcome to Math with Janet. I'm Janet Moore. Today's topic is measurement conversions, specifically with respect to capacity. We are going to do an activity called Build a Gallon. This is designed for fifth grade students and targets standard 5.md.a.1. The materials that we're going to need are going to require a little bit of preparation on your part because we need you to download the templates for all of these paper containers from the website mathwithjanet.com. You're going to need to make uh, print and cut and tape 16 of these small containers, eight of this next size container, four of the next largest container, and one of the biggest gigantic container. Once all of the containers are constructed, they should be sized just right so that they will nest inside of each other and eventually form a nice neat structure just like that. Other than that, the only materials that we need at this point are markers, hopefully in the same colors of cardstock that you printed the different containers on. In previous grades, students have been introduced to the concept of capacity for liquid measurements. They've also performed some simple conversions of measurement units. In fifth grade, we're going to take that one step further and do some problem solving by doing conversions within one measurement system. Specifically in this activity, all of the units involved in building a gallon. We're going to analyze the relationships between those units and hopefully develop an understanding of the structure of the units that make up a gallon. This activity is designed to follow an exploration in which students work with liquids to establish relationships between units that make up a gallon. So they should come into this activity already having been introduced to the fact that there are two cups in a pint and that there are two pints in a quart and that there are four quarts in a gallon. It's best if that's prior knowledge and if that knowledge has actually come from physically working with liquid measurements and liquid measurement tools then this activity will act as a follow-up for doing some analysis and getting creative thinking about those relationships between the measurement units. Okay, math champions, it's time to get started. Let's play math. So each of these smaller red containers are one cup. Once we've established that, we can build on and have two of those. And the question that we want to ask students is, how can we describe this quantity in multiple ways? The first way that students will generally describe this quantity is two cups. But when you ask them for a second way to describe this same quantity, hopefully it's not too big of a stretch for them to say, well, that's the same as one pint. We want to use this as a starting point for establishing that we can describe the same amount in different ways if we choose different units to do the measuring. This is the same quantity. We can either use cups to measure it, and if we use cups, we need two of them, but if we use pints to measure it, we only need one. Now, what if we put that on there? Now again, we want to ask students for multiple ways to describe this quantity. And this time, we're not just going to ask for two ways to describe this quantity, we want at least three ways to describe this quantity. If students are measuring in cups, they might call it three cups. If they are measuring in pints, they might get a little bit stuck because we don't have just a whole number of pints, we might call it one and one half pints or we might call it one pint and one cup using both of the units in a combination. Some students at this point might try to think ahead. They might try to get a little bit creative. They might look and see what the next unit is that we haven't used yet, and they might try to do a comparison to that. So some students might call this same quantity three-fourths of a quart, which gives us an opportunity to introduce our next container. 
Our next container is a quart container and visually we can see that three cups or one and one half pints or one pint and one cup is the same as three fourths of a quart. From here, we just keep on building. We put in more and more blocks, a few at a time, to build different quantities and to ask students to get creative to describe those quantities in a variety of ways. The important thing in this activity is to let students get creative and let their creativity guide your discussion. You want to challenge them to get creative. You want to use the ideas that they come up with for describing these quantities as opportunities to talk about different ways of seeing things and different ways of measuring and describing the same amount. We also want to emphasize how important it is to be precise in our language and in our descriptions. For example, one student might say a quart and a fourth. And when they do, it's not clear what the unit is on that fraction. So do they mean one quart and a fourth of another quart? Or do they mean one quart and a fourth of something else? We want to be precise in our language and we want to make sure that we are being thorough in our descriptions. In this case, it would be more appropriate to say one and one fourth quarts because then we know that the quart is the unit that we are using for both the one and the one fourth. It seems like a trivial thing, but it makes a big difference when you consider the fact that we could call this one quart and one cup, or we could call this one quart and one half of a pint. We're going to continue building on adding a few of our small boxes at a time um, and pausing every once in a while to ask students for a variety of ways to describe these quantities. At some point, students are going to start to look ahead to the next unit. And the next unit after a quart might be a half gallon if they are familiar with half gallons, but formally it's probably going to be a full gallon. When we consider the full gallon, and once a student says, mentions a full gallon, we can introduce that as a unit that is available for descriptions. This quantity, for example, students might describe as 10 cups, five pints, two full quarts and half of another quart, or they might start looking ahead to the gallon and calling this some fraction of a gallon. And even the fraction that they choose is going to depend on which thing they choose to count. If they choose to count pints, for example, they might call this five eighths of a gallon. Or if they choose to count by the cup size measures, they might say, well, we have 10 out of the 16 that we would need for a full gallon. So they might also call this 10 sixteenths of a gallon. We can use this as an opportunity to confirm that those are in fact equivalent fractions. Some students might get really creative and they might choose to try to measure our gallon fraction using quarts. And they might say we have one, two and a half of the four quarts that we would need to make the gallon. This is going to give us a complex fraction. Two and one half fourths of a gallon. We have two and a half quarts and it takes a total of four quarts to make up our whole gallon. Two and a half fourths of a gallon. Now this looks really strange when we write it down. This is called a complex fraction. This is beyond fifth grade standards. Students will learn about complex fractions and learn how to work with them and explore them in future grades. If a student tries to use a complex fraction to describe this quantity, that's awesome. That shows that they're getting creative and thinking about these quantities in a variety of ways they are extending their own fraction knowledge beyond what they've already been taught. 
don't go too far with this. Don't worry about having to explain this in a lot of detail. If students come up with this, just let them know that this is a strange thing called a complex fraction. They are going to learn more about it in future grades. And even though it looks scary when we write it down, it's actually not too difficult to see when we look at this visual. We have two and a half quarts out of the four quarts that we need to make up our whole gallon unit. At some point during this activity, probably even earlier than this point, we want to make a visual diagram of what the students are seeing with this concrete model. We're going to make the representational version so that they can see it and they can see it being built while they are working with the concrete model. So each of those represents a cup. Notice I am color coding because the cups are red here. I'm making the cups red there. I don't have a very good yellow marker, so my pint, even though it's yellow in my physical model, I'm going to make it orange here. So far in our diagram, we have 10 cups and I'm getting a little bit sloppy with my drawing, but that's okay. And sometimes I even do that on purpose so that students know that when we're representing something, when we're drawing to represent something, it's okay if the drawing isn't perfect as long as it accurately represents our thinking. And as long as our thinking is precise, that's the most important thing. So at this point, even though not all of my red squares are perfect squares and not all of them match exactly, they are accurately and precisely showing the relationship between cups and pints. Because in all of my diagram here, two cups make up one pint. And then we're going to add on to that because we also know that two pints make a quart. And so we've got some quarts that we've been drawing already. And we've already shown in our physical model that four quarts are going to make up our gallon. As students are thinking about this concrete model and analyzing the units that we're using to describe the quantities in creative ways, we are going to be building this picture and adding on to this picture along the way. Eventually, we're going to have an entire gallon all filled up and our pictorial representation of this gallon is going to match nicely with the concrete model that students have been using for their analysis. After a good thorough discussion where students are analyzing the relationships between units using this concrete model and also seeing this pictorial representation of the model being built along the way, they are going to be ready to do unit conversions with customary capacity units. When they do, encourage them to use this diagram to help them along the way, to help them remember and analyze the relationships between those units. But this is also a good opportunity to point out that since they might not always have the concrete model, they might want to recreate this diagram to help them in the future, except that this diagram is pretty time consuming to recreate. And so off to the side, I'm going to make another diagram. Notice I'm using the same colors we've been using all along, and it's a little bit hard to see with my thin markers on the video, but this diagram parallels this diagram that we had over here, ending our activity with this diagram, now students have an understanding, an intimate understanding of what each of those letters means and the relationship between the unit that each letter stands for. This has been Math with Janet. I'm Janet Moore. Thanks for playing math with me.